Oz is referred to as the Penguin by other people. There's an incredible depth, an incredible sense of loneliness and isolation. I saw the face of the Penguin for the first time. I was blown away. Matt said, he's like, you're not going to recognize him. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Colin walked up to set, and I was like, no, no. I had absolutely no idea that it was him. He came out in one of the first scenes we shot. It is, look at that. <laughs> Mike Marino designed the Penguin, spent weeks in his studio. Hi, I'm Mike Marino, and I am the prosthetic makeup designer. I'm Mike Fontaine, and I do special effects makeup, prosthetic makeup, particularly Colin Farrell as a Penguin. Mike and I were both mentored by a very famous, legendary makeup artist named Dick Smith, who had done The Godfather. He did The Exorcist and, and Taxi Driver. Matt Reeves had wanted to design a really special character for the Penguin. What was interesting to me about this version of the character was that he was not yet the kingpin. And he's kind of this mixture of someone who people make fun of to a degree, but actually it turns out that under all of that, he's a volcano. Hey, Vincent! We're big fans of hyper-realism. The makeup's very realistic, but also has a magical or surreal element. Our sensibilities really lined up very strongly with what Matt's vision was for the film, which is to create these kind of extreme characters. He wanted something that was a little pathetic and a little uh, sympathetic, so he was referencing uh, Fredo from The Godfather. And I had some ideas of some older gangsters. That's good. It's pretty clever. <laughs> we start off with a life cast of Colin Farrell, which is a plaster cast. Then I take clay and I sculpt what I want it to look like. He had a bust of me and he carved it and went back to it the next day and carved it more and he created this absolutely complete character. And I sculpted it to a very high level with all the detail in it, and the nose and cheeks and the neck. We're very much designing three-dimensionally how it's going to move, where the edges should go, thinking very much about how it's going to function in the film. Colin has this major neck piece that goes under his chin, it wraps around the back. He's also wearing a nose that's connected to his upper lip, a chin, a brow. I had actually added a shape I found on a real penguin uh, of a brow. So I said, I want it to be black and white. So I created the shape of his eyebrow like a penguin. And if you look on the side of his profile, I threw in a little subliminal bird beak, the way his nose is shaped, because it looks like a chipped up scar. So it looks like a penguin beak from the side. And then it's just developed into this strange mob kind of character scarred up, grizzled, kind of heavy guy with maybe an insecurity. He's got some, some deep pock marks and this very textured face. So I sculpt the hair and the bow tie and a and collar and all that, and I get the feeling of it. And I showed Matt, and he first saw the design and was like, that's Colin? Matt said, have you seen it yet? Have you talked to Mike? Mike just sent it to you. You want to see? You want to see? Honestly, when I saw Mike Marino's work and what he had created and how the Penguin was going to look facially, what his visage was going to be, I was so blown away and I was so moved and excited and provoked and my imagination just kind of kicked up a notch. The first time we did a, a, a full application was in Burbank in Warner Brothers Studios. It maybe took four hours, maybe three and a half or four hours, but I, I will say it was one of the most exciting jubilant, celebratory experiences I've had in making pictures in 20 years. Hey, yeah. young man, this is... And to see the makeup for the first time with Greg, the cinematographer there, and, and Greg came up and he had his camera phone with the light on. The quality of his prosthetics was so good, I, I was blown away. And he held it over this side and this side and this side, and he was, the shock on his face, he literally could, he said, I can't, I can't see, I can't, I really can't, I can't see any, place where it doesn't, wow. You take a character or an actor that we all know. You know, we know the shape of Colin Farrell's face. We know how his performances are in other films that he's done. But his eyes are so piercing 
and so clear that he's got this kind of paradox that goes on where he's got the face of somebody that feels like somebody who's been through a lot, but his eyes are sharp. Oz is aware of what he looks like and certain physical attributes or certain potentially physical handicaps he may have, including a fairly noticeable jerk in his gait as a result of something going on with his right leg, shall we say. He wears the hardship of the life that he's lived up until this point. Colin is just about as great as an actor could possibly be. He really understands how to use the makeup. Colin just became the character. It almost overcame him. I'm Oz. And it wasn't until that transformation happened that we saw Colin really inhabit the character that Matt wrote. And I remember that Colin surprised us with an iPhone video footage of when it was the first showing of that. Where are you from? Anywhere I'm from. What the Love you? Send me your business. I don't know things about me. Why don't you send me a little email? I'll write you back real quick. Where do you live? Hey, why don't you come Where do you live, live actually? I can, I can hand deliver a letter to you. I can hand deliver a letter to you. <laughs> the more pieces go on, the more his voice subtly starts to change, and he starts to become aware of his features and using them in the mirror. It just started pouring out. He was having so much fun in it. Good. Good, good. It was the first time I've ever did a full face makeup and, and had the opportunity to inhabit that. And I'm utterly grateful to Mike and his team and, and to Matt for having the moxie to, to push this as far as I feel we've pushed it, you know? You know my reputation? I do. Do you? It's always nice to be in a scene with someone. You can see they're really enjoying it as well, just really feeling the look of the character. Colin was able to really bring that character to life with his movements, the way he walked, the way he spoke. And I was taking care of giving it, I suppose, animating it, giving it motion and giving it voice. And it's definitely, I mean, there's not, <laughs> like no penguin has been like that before. And that was the great gift that Mike Marino's talent has given me on this film. It's nothing short of creative genius. When we finished shooting, I had this a very emotional thing because I was like, I kind of got to know Oz and I was very close to Oz because Colin as Oz is this character. And I thought, I'm not going to see you the same anymore. He really did become somebody else entirely. Do you want to say something to the camera? What would you say to the camera? I don't know. What do you want to say? You want to show? I want to confess. Give your tickets. <laughs> you pay for this performance? Careful. I give so much praise to, to those folks who are creating what they've created. <laughs>